there should or should not the involvement of Sprint Cup drivers be limited in some way? I think they should be limited in some way. Let's get to the point, though. We need the Cup drivers racing in a nationwide series to put more people in the grandstands. They want to see those Cup guys compete out there. But the problem I got, they've got a lot of technical assistance from their Cup teams. The regular nationwide teams don't have that to a point. We just talked about having to go out and sell more, work hard, buy all this stuff because the nationwide teams don't have the manufacturer support like they've had. But you know what? I really think if you talk to NASCAR, they're going to tell you, man, we love to have a nationwide only guy win this championship. So how do you do it? You know, I really think, <laughs> Good I really think, oh, here it comes, right? Yeah. I really think there's got to be some type of limitation on how many times those guys can run per year. Maybe say 25 races a year, pick your best 25 and go for it. But something's got to happen. We've been talking about this forever and ever and ever. Nothing's getting done. And I think we need that to make the Nationwide Series stronger. Go down uh, pit road and talk to another crew member standing down there, Mark Hollywood Armstrong. He's the front tire changer on Stephen Wallace's 66 car. Mark, have you got, uh, you got everything ready to go? This is not going to be a long race now, so you, you got to make it happen here in these few stops that we're going to have. Yes, Andy, it's, uh, it's real hot down here, but right here in this pit box, that's where it's all going to happen. Car's really good. This racetrack's really, really hard to pass on, so track positions, everything. But we got a little bit of secret today. We got something that all these other teams out here ain't got. We got the five-hour energy on our side, five-hour Toyota out on the racetrack. We're going to victory lane. <laughs> okay, Mark, it's not a secret anymore now. That's okay, but we're going to have fun with it. <laughs> okay, man. Wait. I thought that was a Chevrolet. Yeah, yeah I thought it was a Chevrolet, Chevrolet too. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, that's a secret. I don't know. But uh, hey, we'll have to fix it with that when we get back. <laughs> we got Hollywood, that's a Chevrolet he's driving, buddy. Okay, well, I messed up there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we got the lights out on the pace car, guys. We're on one to go. Getting ready to go green, right? Let's watch your son go through this, Rusty. Let me close my eyes first, okay? It's close. It's close. <laughs> Oh, man, I'll tell you what, that, that's tough watching that stuff. It really is. Take a look at Reed Sorensen right there and Stephen Wallace running side by side. Last time I saw Reed in a nationwide car, he finished second over there to St. Louis, I believe it was. He's won there before, had a great run for James Finch. He's given this car another good run today. He just took the 13th spot away from Stephen Wallace. I like to hear what the drivers got to say about this track right now because you know, all week long they've been talking about how slick it is out there, slipping and sliding everywhere. And Justin Allgaier starting to uh, try to make that top side work too. You can see he had Rudman right behind him as he he has moved around now. Stephen Wallace and going into the 13th spot. David Rudman following right along with him. So these guys have uh, come from back in the high 20s and 30 to uh, move their way forward. And if they can get a caution to get them back closer, they seem to have cars as fast as a lot of the guys up front. You guys, talking about caution, we're lap 29 right now. I mean. This first pit stop, it's got to be a three or four laps less than what we would normally see. Andy, when you, and Ray, when do you think the first stop's going to come? Well, the, the fuel cycle here is about 44, 45 laps, I guess, right, Andy? So you'd take three laps away from that and when add the cautions back in. They're probably going to be in that 42 lap range. Cautions out right now. We had a car, uh, the 40 car, smoking. Yeah, Scott Wimmer looks like he had an engine problem right there in the middle of three and four, right in the middle of pit stops. Brian Vickers had come on the pit road. He's going to go ahead and make his stop. Rear spoiler angle, and Max downforce is around 70. So it sounds like he's going to try to get some more downforce with this spoiler also. There we go, Rusty. Going to spend some money here. Get well, four tires on this thing. Four. We're going to Hollywood Armstrong on this right front tire here, changing. Get ready, clear pit road, big hard, big hard, 4200 all the way, all the way, good job. See him waiting on the left rear tire changer, he was in there taking a spring rubber out of the way. Nah. Of note to me, uh, a couple things of note to me. First of all, Stephen Wallace got the uh, lucky dog and has gotten back onto the lead lap, so he has rejoined this uh, lead group of cars. A few taking the wave around there, including Austin Dillon and uh, Michael McDowell. So they're back on the lead lap, that's 20 cars on the lead lap. Here's a replay. Yeah, ran out of room off of turn two. It looked like he got tied up behind Stephen Wallace there and just pushed up into the wall. Yeah, it looks like he lost his nose yeah. and just couldn't turn the car. 